All right. So, Steph, you you've been in uh, you've been doing this for eighteen years. Um, tell me some of the uh, observations that you have from existing. So you're going in, and the company says, "Hey, Steph, we you know we want to engage your services, and we want to step up sales and and, and you know boost some um, quarterly or annual sales or whatever. And I want you to work with our sales team. And so, what are your immediate observations on? where they are currently when you get there. What are, what are some obvious standouts that the typical salesperson is doing? Yeah, great question, uh, Ashton. Uh, organizations today want to grow the revenue, right? Absolutely. And uh, so when we work with organizations, uh, when I tell them that we can immediately improve your uh, revenue about 20%, one of the first things they do is their eyebrows go up, they're going, sure. how do you know how to do that? Well, we get this from the observations and then fixing the observations. Okay, so here's a couple of observations that, first of all, when a salesperson walks in with an executive, one of the things that we see is they're just not sufficiently prepared. They go, you know, they show up and throw up is kind of a term in our industry, right? Okay, right. Uh, so they, they're not prepared. They don't know how to start. They don't know how to end. They know how to fill, facilitate this meeting. They're not really sure what's going to get the executive's interest. They have an assumption, maybe based on past experience. Mm -hmm. But most of the observations that we see, I'm talking about hundreds of meetings that we've mm -hmm. been in uh, with, the, with our uh, training staff. And they typically report back that most of the reps that we see go in and they're not prepared. Uh, the other second thing is, this is a big one, uh, is they have a preconception about how much money this executive or this uh, department leader is willing to spend. And a coach, you know what happens when you have a preconception that, let's say, I, I, I think you only can spend uh, $25. All right, well, I'm going to tailor my whole talk track around that. Mm -hmm. And and the reason that reps do that is that they walk in with a uh, kind of a false assumption mm -hmm. that you, you don't have any money. Right. And that is completely not true. We tell sure. people all the time that when people tell you they don't have a budget, it's not that they don't have the budget or they have the money. They just hadn't seen the value put the money there. That's right. So uh, not being fully prepared, uh, not or preconceived notion of how much to spend. And the, uh, the other one is just lack of structure. They don't have any structure when they go into these meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, they, have, they may have an agenda that covers way too much stuff, mm -hmm. but typically their agenda covers what? The salesperson wants to talk about, not what the client wants to talk about. Okay. You know, one of the things on that is I remember you asked um, someone uh, in one of our meetings to say, how'd that meeting go? And how do you think that meeting went? Oh, I think it went fantastic. So what does fantastic look like? And then the gentleman started, uh, the salesperson started telling, and then you started drilling down and said, so, so what questions did you ask? And we'll ask this, this. So how long was this meeting? 30, 40 minutes. Okay, so what did you learn about their business? And it turned out they learned almost nothing from right. the client. And they did almost all the talking, which is a big problem when people think they're great in sales. They think mm -hmm. that they're going to do most of the talking. And the reality is you should be doing the least in a meeting with an executive. Well, absolutely. And that's the, the fourth point is that salespeople talk too much. Uh, because they, they're talking all the time, they're losing the interest of the person that they're talking to. Uh, your senior reps, those who, those who are top performers, when they start a meeting, they immediately, you'll find that they start asking a lot of questions. And each question that they ask, there's a reason they're asking that question. Right. There's not, they're just not throwing questions out because they're supposed to ask questions. Right. So that's an, an, an observation is that you need to know how to start uh, authenticate yourself in two and a half minutes, which they don't. Right. Uh, then they need to start asking questions. Right. Uh, another observation that we see is a lot of organizations have do buddy calls. A sales manager goes with right. them, right? right? Or a um, sales engineer goes with them. That's right. Uh, one of a big observation that we see in the field that happens over and over is that the sales engineer, the person going with them, they're not sure when to engage, when to disengage. The salesperson or account rep isn't sure when to have them engage, when to disengage. And because there's not a good handoff there, uh, the meeting is kludgy. And yeah. uh, it doesn't make sense to the person that you're talking to. And it looks less professional. 
Yeah, uh, we've all been on meetings or we've observed some meetings, I should say, uh, even recently where the engineer took over the meeting and completely lost everything. And the sales, uh, the salesman had a hard time getting control back of the meeting. And I mean, so, but, but well, one of the things that uh, our system teaches is that's all pre-discussed before you walk into that door. Mm -hmm. This is where you're going to engage. This is, and then you're going to disengage. Yeah, absolutely. In today's market, when you're meeting with executives, those meetings, those reps have got to step up to a different level, mm -hmm. to a different method. Uh, if they don't do that, and if they start going back to the way they used to be doing things, uh, the executives are losing interest. And why is that? Well, you know, we've had Miller Hyman, Zig Ziglar, we've had Self Performance International. These are all great training companies. Mm -hmm. They've been teaching the same processes for the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good news. Bad news, they've been teaching this process for the last 20 years. Right. But what happens is that now the talk track is familiar to the audience. That's right. So as soon as you start those talk tracks, those executives basically lose interest because they know you're trying to sell them out. That's right. And yeah. the main thing executive wants you to do is they want you to authenticate yourself within two and a half minutes. And when they leave that meeting, they need to be saying to themselves, uh, gee, you're really trying to help me here, not get in my wallet or get in my purse. Okay, Steph, so those those are really good. Uh, what are some other observations that, that you've mm -hmm. noticed when working with uh, some of these organizations? Well, I think a, a big observation that we see is the sales managers have to really arm wrestle the reps to call high. That means call on the senior executives. They're used to calling on, say, if in the technology world, an I, uh, information technology manager. Mm -hmm. But they really avoid Ashton calling on the CIO or the CTO or maybe just start at the top executives. Mm -hmm. The reason that that happens is uh, imagine if I hired you to call on top level executives and you started doing that but your meetings with them typically fell flat. Sure. Uh, and it created a lot of pain. That means you're doing these meetings, you're calling in, but it's not going well. Right. Well, you're gonna avoid what? Calling right. high. You're gonna right. be more comfortable calling below those people. Right. So the main reason they do that is not because they're not talented individuals, because they simply don't know what to say. Right. And because they don't know what to say, they don't get a, an effective response from the executive and get their interest. Because, you know, their attention is really scarce. You've got just a few minutes to get their interest. So that's an observation that, that we see. Another one is that uh, when sales reps accept a meeting, when I, well, when I, another, I'll redo that. Another one is that when a client accepts a meeting with a sales rep, we assume that because they accept a meeting, they probably have a problem. And that's not necessarily true. They may have accepted a meeting because you're tenacious and they finally said, hey, come meet with me. Right. Well, because the mindset is that you have a problem. I start the meeting looking for what? The problem. Pain. Right. And uh, the research tells us that 30% of the people or the buyers out there know they already have a problem. If they know they have a problem, then they are going to be calling somebody. Right. All right. 70% of the buyers, especially executives that buy stuff, buy because of a benefit that they didn't know they didn't, they didn't have. Right. Uh, uh, most people know, we know that from the television world. Most people upgrade their television, but nothing's wrong with their television, right? That's right. So they're buying a benefit that they don't currently have. Mm -hmm. So we find a better conversion rate when reps go into a meeting and they have got a structure they're using that's helped them not only identify the pain naturally, but also what's the opportunity that you could provide for this person. 70% mm -hmm. is a much bigger pie to be looking for than 30%, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So the observation is uh, they don't call high because they don't know what to say. Right. And the other thing is they assume that the client has a problem. And those are two observations besides the other ones that when reps walk into a meeting, the cost to an organization for each rep to do a sales meeting is between $600 and $1,200. Let me, you know, one obvious observation that I think of, so uh, on calling high, is if you go in and meet with a owner or a CEO or an executive that has the authority to make a decision and spend the money for the company, that's going to be probably two or three meetings less than going down at the lower levels. And a guy says, yeah, I love it. We need it. 
let me meet with my boss and see if he, now you have to have another meeting, and you may not even be in that meeting, then he tells them what you said and he butchers it, right? Right. And then, and then you hope you can get on that meeting, and then, oh, by the way, now I need to go meet with the boss's boss to approve the budget. So now you basically have, you triple the amount of work versus let's start right at the decision maker if we can get to them. But if you're too intimidated mm-hmm. to have that conversation, executive level conversations, I would say, is probably one of your biggest niches. Yeah. Well, you know, if you if you know how to meet with an executive well, you know how to meet with everybody below that. Right. And the reason this is critical to our audience that's, that's watching the, this information is that if you can shorten the sales cycle, which every organization wants to do, right? if you can shorten the sales cycle by having more effective meetings that give you the desired outcome, mm-hmm. you're simply going to do, well, imagine this. If you're doing 10 meetings a week creating two proposals and you get one proposal to close, right. why don't you do 10 meetings a week, all right, generate four proposals, and with our process, which is the two meeting close or from the sales meeting advantage course, mm-hmm. you close three proposals. Right. So you're not doing more meetings, you're just doing better meetings. Better meetings. Yep. Now, what does that do for the rep? Well, you know, uh, the number one thing that we see in salespeople that they need over everything is confidence That's at the right. executive level. If they lack confidence, then you're going to, as an organization, you're gonna spend a lot of money uh, trying to train somebody, but if they don't know that if they don't have the confidence, it's not going to work. Now, what's interesting about confidence, where does confidence come from in salespeople? It comes from a strategy that works. Right. That's right. And when I implement a strategy, strategy and I know it works, man, my confidence goes through the roof. And I, I'll tell you what, I don't know an executive that doesn't know that confidence sells. That's right. Isn't that right? Absolutely. So our methodologies and process do a couple of things. They shorten the sales cycle. Mm-hmm. We're not saying do more meetings, we're saying doing better meetings, mm-hmm. and we're saying do those meetings with a different methodology, change at the top track just a little bit that captures their in- interest, validates the rep, and then gets a, uh, an agreement for a proposal. That's a true commitment, not a false commitment. Come back and go through our proposal presentation course, which is the second part of two meeting close, right? right? Right. And watch the magic happen. I hope you enjoyed watching our video. Uh, be sure to click on the link below and get some great resources and books. This is a 32 sales objection book that will help you handle any objection that comes your way. Also, get out of survivor mode and become a thriving salesperson with our Survivor Thrive book. And you may want to consider the companion workbook, the Survivor Thrive workbook. Now, to get these resources, you can click on the link below. If you go to our website and order it, You'll get an author signed copy of any of these books, uh, or you can simply click on Amazon, go to amazon.com. The link is below. You can get it from any uh, of the uh, Amazon Barnes and Nobles and things like that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you next time.